Yeah. Because I knew what was going to go down that night. I wasn't thinking about what happened Friday. I was so busy in my life with with my daughter and we had to go somewhere. I was just excited for 1130. And I put that mother, me and my wife watched uh, his special because my wife had never known who Shane was. So I go, let's watch the special so you could see it. Which one Netflix? Netflix came down and we all watched Saturday Night Live, except when my wife went up about midnight. But she watched his monologue. And it was so funny. It's like it reminded me when I used to be a thief. From the minute I knew I was robbing Lee's house, as soon as I got out of my car, I was on a complete mission to just steal. There was no that I think about how it affected my comedy, how it was the same mentality. Like I think about when I kidnapped Bella. When I went back to get the Coke, it didn't matter to me who was there. I was getting that fucking Coke. Right. I that fucking door down like I owned it. And I went in there and I just took it out and I just got in my car and left. And I did a thousand, I did maybe 10 things where I got out of the car and I knew I had a mission. Nothing was going to stop me. I don't care if you had 10 locks on your door. I was taking your dog off the hinges. And then I would go in, and even though you thought you hid the Coke or the money, I got it. That's just the way it was. And I'd walk out of there like I'd own it. And people people from the area would look at the door like, you just busted that dude's door and walked in there and walked out. It didn't even matter to me because if I ran out of there, then I would get their attention. But I walked out like I was walking my dog, like I was looking for Lulu. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I just went, I used to go deaf. That's what the whole point of this fucking You're like is. locked in. Yeah. When you get locked in, you go deaf. You get you go deaf. Your ears ring. Whenever I would do something bad, my ears would ring. Whenever I get excited, my ears would ring. Saturday night, 1130, my ears were ringing. Wow. Because I was so excited for Shane because I knew what he was going to do. Listen, you know, I don't know. My wife just told me this morning that there was a lot of people bad mouthing his set and this and that. It really doesn't matter. You know what the fucking bottom line is? SNL had the highest ratings they had Saturday night for the last 20 years. Definitely. And everybody saw what I saw. That Shane was heads and tails above those people on that cast. Whatever anybody wants to say, that was real comedy. That was somebody who started in Philadelphia and worked himself in fucking shithole rooms and PA and wherever the fuck they go around here, the fucking train. It's, you know, no picnic. And he, they fired him because he said some shit on a podcast. It's us cracking jokes. But, you know, people can't let nothing be with this, with this this in this world. You got a job tomorrow, Lee? They're going to bring up clips from the church. Oh, yeah? 15 years from now. You fainting and dosing poor Owen Benjamin, you know, the whole thing. <laughs> Are you a part of a fucking cynical world? We were dosing people. It doesn't matter. They're always going to find a way to take you down now. You know, they fucking uh, took his job away. This kid didn't hide. He fucking went and shot a special in Austin. Yeah. And and from there, the gravy train didn't stop. He just kept, he knew exactly what to do. And nobody could tell him he was canceled or nothing. It didn't, it went in one ear and went out the other. What comics? We don't need the fucking system at all. We use the system because we think we don't need the system. When you first got into comedy, you got into comedy because there was a guy with a fucking brick wall and a microphone. It wasn't because fucking Adam Sandler did 2,000 movies. That's why you're getting into stand-up and tell me you want to be a tour manager. You know, you want to do world tours. No, you're not. Because in the meanwhile, you want to be Adam Sandler. And I'm not mad at you. But there's a guy that went up there and, you know, his jokes weren't, I mean, to me, I was dying. He was, he, he was great. I love when people push a joke and then they believe in it. Whether you laugh or not, they're laughing. That burns people. People get, especially the people in that room. Oh, yeah. The band behind him was pissed. The band and the, the poor gay Chinese guy with the fucking- <laughs> You know, every time Chappelle went on, let's see where Yang is. You know, this guy went on, let's see. You know, who gives a fuck? What comics? 
What the fuck is going on? What the fuck has been forgotten? What has been forgotten? What has happened to not only comedy, television, the last five, six fucking years? Everybody's had ammunition out for everything. You can't do nothing. Poor Joy Coy, a month ago, fucking, you know, went up there. Oh, my God. For two weeks, they dragged him in the mud. Little did they know he was about to sell out the forum two nights in a row. And all that, all that fucking publicity made him sell 2,000 more fucking tickets, or 10,000 in his fucking world. So, you know, these people love to, every time they point a finger, they haven't learned from Andrew Dice Clay. They never learned. What's that? You don't like Lee? You don't like Joey Diaz? Shut the fuck up. If you know they're going to be on a show, don't watch it. But for you to watch it and then fucking say how they ruined the show. Listen, I've always believed one thing, and I'll state it right now when anybody gets mad or gives a fuck. There's the improv in L.A., there's the Laugh Factory, and there's the Comedy Store. And I truly believe this. The improv is a great company. They're a great company. I love working Melrose and across there. They made me who I am today, the improvs. I'm not going to lie to you. I worked a lot of their rooms. The Laugh Factory was great to me. I always liked Jamie when, when I first moved to L.A., I went in there and did fucking Monday nights every Monday, 20 minutes, $25. That was $100 a month. That was big in my world when I walked into Jamie's. But I always believed one thing. I don't know if I ever said this or not. I don't give a fuck. When you pass through the comedy store, not on a Tuesday night, they do the belly room with Lulu the Magician. I'm talking about when you're in the original room banging out with these fucking animals and you're in the main room banging out with the fucking animals. And again, I say the main room loosely because my first seven years in the main room, I fucking, my percentages were 10% of doing well in that. I would bomb just on nerves and whoever was in front of me or whatever. But I'm going to tell you what I believed then, what I believe now. It made me a comedy Marine. And the people who were in there at the time when I was in there were comedy Marines. What does that mean? We go in when nobody else could fix it. <laughs>